we have liquid ambar and we're showing some old wind injury here. This tree is showing some very serious wind damage. If we look up at the top, we can see a very large tear out area right at the central lead of the tree. Just extraordinary winds have come through here. This is actually a few years old. We have some re-sprouts we've observed in the top of the tree and what we feel is necessary here is to recut down to sound wood and treat that end grain. We have a very small up pointer. It doesn't satisfy Alex Shigo's one-third rule, but it's the only strong leader that we have. And so we're going to go ahead and utilize it. We're going to take it down, make a draining cut, treat the end grain, and give the chance for re-sprout to occur. We know the species has strong re-sprout characteristics, so we're going we're to depend on that for the tree's future development. This is an ideal time to prune this tree. It's in dormancy. The leaves have not broken yet, and so we're just in time to make these corrections while the tree is in dormancy. We'd rather do that now when we can see the whole scaffold, the whole silhouette is easy to observe. We can see the tree's condition, so we feel that this is the best time to see the tree. We've got full dormancy. We're going to be able to identify and address each of the tree's defects. We do have a lot of damage. The tree is known to be a brittle species, perhaps a tree that wouldn't be best chosen in windy areas. They're known to wind throw and have tear outs pretty easily. So we're leaving the tree as complex as we can. We still have some defects. We still have some areas that are not idealized and not in genetic morphology, but we're leaving as much new sprout and, and potential sprout as we can so the tree has maximum potential to recover itself and to heal itself. We have a lot of injuries in the tree, but it's a brave species. It wants to continue. We know them to be strong re-sprouters and we're going to get new adventitious shoots at the top of these heading down cuts. So all these corrections are really necessary for the tree. It has no way of healing these very egregious wounds unless they're recut. So we've recut them to the best locations we can. We're treating all the end grains and then we're going to give the tree a re-sprout opportunity. Well, we've made our big excision at the top of the tree. You can see that's a good eight inches across there. And this injury traces back many years. This might even be our last really big windstorm, January 7th, 97. And we can see we've made our excision, but we don't have a perfect healing potential for the tree. You can see how soft and pithy this interior is. We see our codet response, a compartmentalization underway here where the tree has tried to separate living from dead tissue. So we can see that terpene wall that is trying to create the compartmentalization wall. So certainly a very compromised structural form underway. Not a perfect healing situation for the tree. However, we're still far better off than our former injury. You can see how decayed and compromised this structure is. The tree has bravely tried to heal the injury. We can see here this side branch still alive, sprouted from the edge, and cambium callus rolling in, trying to roll over this very egregious wound. So, of course, this isn't really a wound that the tree is going to be able to properly heal, certainly not off of a leader like this. This is a very weak structural form, very easy for this to peel out in successive storms. Again, this isn't enough to keep this structure alive. So we've taken it down to our two best laterals that are below and we've recut to them. So now it's up to the tree. The tree is just going to have to do the best it can and cope with this extraordinarily egregious wound. But this demonstrates the, the brittleness of the liquid ambar. They tear out easily. The whole top of the tree broke off in this episode, leaving the tree very vulnerable to future damage and final removal. In the best arboriculture, what we're doing for the tree is removing the defects. Defects of form, dead wood, broken wood, diseased wood, these are the things that we want to excise from the tree. We remove from the tree what interferes with ideal health. So not complicated, we are actually driven by the tree's needs. The tree has dictated that this should come out. This is a defect in form and we have removed it.